There we are, we are live again, yes, once again. Uh, before I say anything else, Starshine, I know you've got to race off to a, I don't know what happened there. Uh, before before we do anything else, uh, apparently Starshine, you've got to race off to a doctor's appointment. But Starshine, Starshine, Starshine just asked if we can give a shout out to her, so that's what we're doing. and also to say congratulations because she's still not smoking good for you my lovely uh and good luck at the doctors and uh, hopefully we shall see you next week live you never know uh all right so let's that i want to do that before she has to skip off so first of all good morning everybody welcome to another session uh of our youtube channel i'd like to say good morning uh, to my spirit guide Gregel, who is always by my right side. I'd also like to say um, hello to Carolyn, uh, who is about to come and sit down because we had some little glitz, glitz going on there. Uh, say good morning, Carolyn. Good morning, Carolyn. And say also, Al, we'd like to say good morning to you out in Colorado. Good morning, everyone. Okay, so I think I have to click on you al to stop you from yes. hang on no you click on you wait a minute i've got to <laughs> be patient everyone i've just got to find the little white arrow there it is yes. all right so uh so um we were talking uh carolyn and i we just had a a, a request for healing and um I was I was uh, talking to Carolyn about this particular lady who says that she has absolutely no hope whatsoever, and um, I think hope might be a great subject, Al, for tomorrow. I don't know what you you're thinking, uh, but or or if not tomorrow in our Everything Is Attitude show, certainly at some point in the future in our Everything Is Attitude show, because hope is a is a very odd thing because hope, no matter how much you are crushed and no matter how much life uh, gives you in the way of pain and hurt and hardship and so on, and no matter how much we think that we're living without hope, hope is very, very hard. It's a very hard thing to actually kill, to actually stamp out completely. And um, when someone reaches out, uh, even in the smallest way, even when saying I have no hope, but they reach out to someone like myself, they want some healing or they, you know, or they, even if they, even if someone they have loved has passed and that's why they're devastated and there's no hope or they think there's no hope, there's always a little tiny bit of hope that, that flickers in I hope that when I die, uh, I will, you know, meet my my uh, loved one on on the other side, or they reach out to me with that tiny, tiny, tiny flicker of hope, uh, just simply to have some healing or for someone to help them in their period of feeling that there is no hope. So I want to say to everyone out there, all of you who have at some point in your lives felt hopeless completely hopeless uh, as if there's nothing to look forward to as if your life is going nowhere whatsoever and there's nothing you can do or say that's going to make it feel any better i'd like to say to all of you who are in that state uh, at this moment and for whatever reason you're feeling hopeless about a situation hope is a very funny thing it's like this little candle flame that flickers inside of us. And no matter how hard we sometimes try to douse it, and I'm speaking from my own personal experience when I'm saying this, because there have been times when I have seriously tried to douse any hope because, you know, the will to live or the will to continue on as you've been going, it just seems to be lost to you. That, that darn little flicker of hope. Even if you don't want it to be there, it just keeps sparking. It just keeps going. It keeps hanging on. And, and it's that little tiny flicker of hope, no matter how small it is, that it is what helps us and propels us forward. So even if you're out there and you're feeling that a situation is hopeless or 
that your life is hopeless or whatever it is that's in within you is is it's hopeless and you feel that you have no hope whatsoever trust me when i say you can, it's very very hard to kill hope and even when you don't want it and i think when a lot of people say i have no hope left what they're really saying is i don't want to have any hope left because what has happened to me is too devastating for me to contemplate but that darned little flicker of hope that you really don't want sometimes just won't give up on you and that little flicker of hope i think we can call it god we can call it god force we can call it universal energy whatever it is you want to call it but it shines within you no matter what and it's 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 a doozy to get rid of and uh you know and most of us can't or won't or don't get rid of it entirely and so those of you who are going through an awful situation don't give up don't give up don't give up because that little flicker of hope even if you want to give up even if you're striving to give up that little bit of hope that little bit of god that is a light inside of you is going to start to burn bright again at some point in the future even if you don't want it to it's going to happen anyway uh al do you have anything to say about that i i do think it's a wonderful topic to talk about i think uh attitude uh can can surely help in those situations but sometimes when you're so down and you feel like you've lost hope attitude uh is a tough thing to change but um i would say to, to look for those uh, signs from from God, those those universal signs, and you know, I mean, maybe those will lift you up if you see, you know. A, the problem a, is a, though. The problem is though, Al, as 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 you know, as I certainly know, because I've been in in those situations. Uh, you're not looking. You're not going to look for anything because when yeah. you when you just want to curl into a ball, climb into a bathtub, as I did one time curl into a ball and pretend that the life is not there for you you're not looking for anything in that moment yeah. you're not thinking about anything in that moment you're not thinking to yourself or oh, well you know uh what can i do to help myself you're not thinking of those things you just bury yourself in a ball and you hope that the world will go away and sometimes we hope that you know god will take us in that moment come on you know take let me get out of my misery here and they're the only thoughts that you're having uh so when i say to you you know you can try as hard as you like but you won't get rid of that little flicker of of, uh, of hope because you know because you you are a child of god we are all children of god and god won't allow it to happen we can douse it as much as we want we can ignore it as much as we want but every now and again it will flare up and if you and and sometimes we get really angry about it because we don't want it we don't want that hope but, you know what, what does that mean if you know especially if we've lost someone who we love very much uh you know how, how dare we have hope when they have none we think to ourselves we forget that those we have loved and still love who are now in the spirit world have are still continuing to live and they have tons of hope and excitement and new experiences and so on but while while we're ever thinking well they're dead so i should be too or i want to be too or i don't want to live my life without that person uh we're not actually looking to be helped particularly in any way but when someone writes to me to tell me that story and to say to me i have no hope you wouldn't be reaching out if you didn't have a little teeny bit in there so i just wanted to just talk about that uh all right let's carolyn let's have a are there any is there, any, is there anybody is there anybody oh, there's, there there's there brother nate who's there is there been anybody there since, there. since before the well good for you brother nate let's have your question then shall we Pardon me, Rosemary. Oh, and before we say any more, I do hope I understand it because <laughs> sometimes it gets a bit complicated. <laughs> Would you consider doing a special chapter or book on those of us who have had an alien UFO slash ET experience? It would surely propel you and Great Eagle to new higher heights. Gosh, do we need to be propelled to new and higher heights, Nate? Uh, it's 
it sounds like it it might be a really fun thing to do and it sounds like it might be a really interesting thing to do unfortunately i don't have that experience i'm wise enough to know that that is not my subject i i don't know enough about it i i, I mean if i what would i write about i would write i don't I know that people see things, I know people experience things, but they are beyond my comprehension, they are beyond my understanding. And I suppose if I had nothing else to do, uh, it might be an interesting journey to take a little journey down that track and to see, you know, what there was out there that that you know that that maybe, you know, maybe would be interesting to me. Uh, if only I had more time. Uh, but I also don't feel that anyone should write about anything unless they have a certain expertise about it. And I certainly I don't I don't have an expertise about it. I'm very open to stories. I'm very open to uh, understanding that other people do have these, uh, let's say, strange encounters and unexplained, sometimes often unexplained encounters, uh, which I find fascinating in one way, but I'm not going to write about them, darling, and it's very nice of you to suggest it, but I'm not an expert, so I won't. Uh, Al. So we have Paul. I, I, want to, I want to ask you a question while we're on the subject. Have you ever had a strange encounter? With? With an, with, well, <laughs> anything other than something that you can explain um yes uh, um i've had a couple yeah yeah have you carolyn i have not but i've had three people claim to have felt or seen something in two of my different homes but that's different Right, because I can explain that, and that's what I talk about. Oh, then no, <laughs> I, I'm, I suppose I'm talking about unidentified flying objects, which is what a UFO oh. is, or you know, I mean, I remember being in the desert, uh, both in Egypt and also in um, in uh, Arizona, and seeing, let's say, unidentified lights and objects in the sky. Uh, I was in Arizona and saw some weird things there. You know, if you go out into the desert in in Arizona or Colorado, you're in Colorado. Uh, late, you know, late at night or in the early hours of the morning, you can often see things out there that are that to me are unexplained. But just because they're unexplained doesn't mean necessarily that they're not of this world. You see, that's where my expertise fails me. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's. Uh, you said. You said you had Paul. I'm sorry, Paul. Uh, and Paul, I do, and I'm going to call you later if you're around, because um, I do need to have a conversation with him because he's lovely. Does he have a question? He does. Yeah. Uh, Let's go for he says, "Morning, all." My question is, if time isn't linear, like Einstein said, and it's possible for the astral to travel through time, is it possible that we can send thoughts to ourselves in the past? Did you have to be this complicated <laughs> this early in the morning? I thought it was a really good question. <laughs> it is a good question. Can you repeat it? Yes. If time is... Get the Dan Einstein bit. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> is it possible that we can send thoughts to ourselves in the past? I'm asking Grey Eagle, and um, well, you you answer, you ask the question. So here's the answer, and I'm going to have to think on what it all means later. But the answer is, let me try and get this right. The an the answer is so confusing. So the answer is. How do we know 
that the past is the past how do we know that the past is the past and not the future that we have not yet encountered so i'm saying to gregor well if we send thoughts to ourselves that if i sent thoughts to myself they would be thoughts of healing and encouragement and so on so if i sent them to myself would it matter if i was sending them to my past self or my future self because how do we know which is which and how do we know that where we are today is not the past this is very complicated we're talking about time and time is a complicated issue i'm moving on i've obviously i bet i've confused him completely because i'm confused as well are you confused al are you confused Karen? <laughs> <laughs> my only thought was I want to give myself some thoughts for the future, not the past. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, whatever. Uh, anyway, I'm, uh, I'd love to know if you'd like to uh, enlighten us. I'd love to know why he asked that question. Or well, that could be a question you ask in putting your new book, Rainbow Speaks. Yes, we're working on a new book. Can you imagine that? We've only just finished the cookbook. Yes, we finished it. Yes, we have. And uh, we think it's going to be a, around, what did we say? $55, which is 50 or something, 50 or $55, something like that, which is much cheaper than we anticipated. But we know that who's going to pay that amount for a cookbook? You know, so I didn't do it to sell it. But if you'd like a copy, you're welcome to have a copy, anybody out there. Uh, but this is uh, for my daughter. She has no clue, unless she watches this show, which she probably won't, but she's no clue that it's now finished and uh, about ready to go. But if anybody out there would happen to like one, email us, rosemary at rosemaryartair.com, and we can tell you exactly where to get one and when to get it because it's, you know, sort of like just a few days from being available. Al. Yeah, Paul. Paul actually said he under understood what you said. Uh, oh, good. Cause I'd love you to explain to me then, because I had. And he, and no, he I, said, I sort of, I sort of understood it. And he said, um, he actually said that makes sense first, and then he said, I was thinking of that because a friend of mine was very badly bullied as a child, and and I wondered if the child could receive love from the future self. Well, the child is within us anyway, and the child is, I think, I, I do think it's a really good question, even though it's a complex question, but, the, you know, if you, if you have been bullied as a child, that child is still within you, and to send thoughts to that child within is the way to go, and um, I think what Craig is trying to say to us is that we are, whether it's past, present, or future, we simply are, and, um, you know, whatever went on uh, to to, to make us who we are today, whatever experience we've already had. Uh, you know, I think giving healing to our own self and our own, the child within us is a very important thing for us to do. Uh, thanks for that question, Paul. That was great. Carolyn. Teresa has a question. Good morning, Teresa. There is a young man, Jamie, staying with us. He lost his mother in 2010. He says he doesn't get signs like I do with my husband. Can you tell us if she's here with him? I'm asking Greg the the answer to this question because you know it's a, a it's it you know we're dealing with uh, youngsters. I'm very very aware of my ability to influence people, and I prefer to influence in a positive way rather than a negative way. It would be so easy and so you know sort of. So easy to tell. Well, of course, his mother's with him. You know, where, why wouldn't she be? Of course, she is, and that would be my natural reaction because I'm pretty sure within my own self that uh, he has his mother surrounding him with love. However, Gregor would like to add to that and to say that she is with her angels and. Teresa, I can tell you from Grey Eagle specifically, you do have angels in your hands from time to time, and they're helping this 
I'm going to say a child. I don't know how old he is. Might be a young man of 20 something, but to me or to Grey Eagle, he's certainly a child. We, we already said a child of God, yes, but I don't think, I think he's struggling with these, uh, with these issues. I think he's struggling with the loss of his mother. And I think she and his angels and hers are trying their very best to help him. Don't put pressure on for him to look for signs. Don't put any pressure on him at all. It will happen in its own time. And I'm pretty sure he's going to see her at some point in the future. But don't, don't rush it. There's no rush for it. She's there with him and she's helping him. Ah. So we have uh, Nah, I think it's just initials, N-A-H, uh, and says, good morning all. My, my question is, what does the spirit world feel and think about abortion and capital punishment, such as the death penalty in our physical world? Oh gosh, I'm so glad you answered this question because um, uh, many, 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 many years ago, I got together with uh, friends, several different friends actually, who wanted to ask the same sorts of questions of Grey Eagle. And so Grey Eagle and I would sit quietly together and I would ask him these questions. Now, some of these questions are about the, the very issues that the, that Nah, nah whatever, brought up. Uh, and they're, they're, I mean, those are two questions that are actually in uh in this uh, in gray eagle's writings um and uh um it's a lot of it is about tolerance a lot of it is about is about understanding when we talk about the uh, the idea of abortion i know that the idea of abortion is abhorrent to so many people and i do understand why but at the same time i also have an understanding uh of the fact that there are certain souls who come to this earth and place themselves within uh, a woman's womb, you can say a mother's womb, because for that moment in time that that uh, soul is within the womb and housed within the, the womb, that then that, that it has that sort of mother love, that mother energy within it. Um, some... Uh, some souls choose to come here and to experience the birthing process, uh, to experience that breath of uh, true earth that, that they want to experience being held uh, by, by, you know, someone, probably their mother, or they want to have a connection, even though it might be only for a minute or two or even less. They want to have that experience of what it feels like to be part of our human soul structure in that way. Some souls choose to come here for a lesser time. Uh, you can say, you can call them miscarriages, you can call them abortions, whatever it is. But God decides ultimately even though we think that the woman decides or the, you know, the couple decide to have an abortion, whoever it is, you, it won't happen if God says no. It, it just won't happen. It, it can't happen because there are so many things that are determined. One of those things that is determined is our birth. And the other of those things which is determined is our death. Those two things are set in stone. So if a woman chooses to have an abortion, for instance, um, then it's a choice that has already been decided before she even thinks that she's decided it. It's, a, it's something that has already been decided because that particular soul has chosen to, to have the experience of being within the mother's womb, but not to have the experience of having a full you know, life here on this earth plane. These things are complicated. These things, the, it's, it's, when we judge, and we're talking about judgment here and being, people being judgmental, which we all are to a point, but when we judge, if we judge without all of the facts, this is when we get in a muddle. 
if we judge knowing certain facts we have an, an entire picture and we are once we have our, an entire picture we're much less likely to judge um what was the other there was one about abortion there was the capital punishment and capital punishment um i was going through the book uh yesterday and came actually across this question that greg will talk uh about in in some detail because uh, in every society as he says he, he puts it much better than i do and much more poetically than i do actually it's a it's a it's a work his words are so rich and so full of love and so not condemning and so not judgmental in any way simply stating certain facts which is you know just, just i find truly inspiring but uh when we live in a society which has rules man makes the rules god doesn't make the rules for man's society man makes those rules but if you join society and you want to be a part of society which of course the majority of us do then you follow the rules and if you break the rules then there are consequences and you when you break the rules you know that there are consequences it's not like saying to a child of two you know if you do that you know actually even at two years old you can teach children that there are consequences to bad behavior and there always should be consequences to behavior, good or bad, whether it's, you know, a treat and a good job you or whatever it is, or whether it's, you know, a, a punishment or, you know, don't do that again sort of thing. There have to be consequences in our lives because we live in a society that without consequences, we would be, you know, we would be, it would be overrun with madness. So we have to follow the rules of society. And knowing that we follow the rules of the society, the spirit world is, you know consequently accepting of our decisions as humans living on this earth we have elected these people who make the rules we have we we try to abide by them the majority of us try to abide by them but if you break the rules of society there are consequences and that's what living is about that's what life is about even even after we leave this earth plane there are consequences to what we did when we leave here and we have to go to the light and face ourselves there of course there are consequences to the negative actions that we took but there are also consequences to the good actions that we took good consequences as well so you know um uh, i think uh, who is it who asked this question uh no nah, the initials are any uh, right so i think you're going to love to hear Gregor's words because he talks not only the spirit world he talks about life you know the questions all sorts of questions about the intolerance of humans and the, and the questions in the book are questions that lots of people have asked and come up with to um to ask gray eagle about our humanness about our human lives about you know whether you know we should be selfish or what happens if we are selfish i mean a trillion questions i don't know how many there are but at least in this book there are going to be at least 50 questions and they're going to be answered by gray eagle and the book is called uh gray eagle speaks it's been on the back burner for a good 30 years uh and we've added to those questions and of course gray eagle's added to them over the years but uh it's a it's a beautiful work it's a beautiful work of of art in my opinion the way he speaks the way he explains things he's so loving and caring and so beautiful and in fact i actually said to carolyn the other day because carolyn has her favorite book that i've ever written which is soul signs right yes. she, that's her very favorite book and i said to her if i had to choose a book that is my favorite book uh it would be gray eagle speaks because um because i'm so inspired by it uh al let's have a question or a comment or anything you like uh, so we have doug he on, says, doug. He says Ho hope is light light is never totally gone uh, call on the angels when feeling hopelessness it works it does but as i said uh doug to al uh, when, Al, when I asked Al what he thought about what I was saying, he said, well, you know, you need to 
do to do this or look there or think this or that when you feel that hope is gone or when you feel that uh, on a subconscious level you don't deserve hope it's all very well people saying look to the angels and and it works and it does you're ex exactly right and i'm with you 100 percent. but if you are so depressed you're not looking anywhere so you're not going to see anything that you don't want to see so the rest of us have to send our love and our hopes and our prayers for these people who are without or feel that they are without hope as I said earlier, can't kill it. It's not possible. Uh, Carolyn, is it your turn? I don't know. I'm a bit lost, really. Let's you, you go go anyway. Even if you've been before, it doesn't matter if it's your turn or not. Go for it. Gardens of the Gods uh, says. Oh, I, this is a person. Yes. Gardens of the Gods. I have a question. I'm going to call you Tulip. Good morning, Tulip. I've been stuck in what they call the dark night of the soul. Oh. I pray, ask Lord and angels. I'm pretty helpless right now. Um, they are also wanting to know if there's any way that they can talk to you privately, but apparently their email isn't working. So I've suggested that they create perhaps another email account, but that really is the only way to talk to you privately. Well, email. yeah, if anybody wants a consultation, you have to, you do have to email us, rosemarysmarealtea.com. I do take consultations. I do take private con consultations. And um, uh, the only way to get hold of us is actually through an email or a but if you have a text, you have an email, don't you? So, no, it, it, I'm sorry, darling. Uh, I don't know any. Can you think of any other way? I have no idea how else you, you can't. When when I talk to people, either they come here to see me at the house privately, or I will speak to them either on FaceTime, which is an Apple product. If you have an Apple phone, we can FaceTime. It doesn't cost you anything no matter where in the world you are it costs you nothing you can talk for two hours if you want and it costs you nothing which is brilliant skype uh is another one and um messenger is another one there are lots of uh, didn't somebody ask about zoom the other day so there are lots of ways that you can do video conferencing i usually use facetime or skype for my uh, for my consultations um, but uh, occasionally I've used messenger um, but unfortunately my love I think you have to have an email address or you have if you I mean you must know people who have email maybe you could ask somebody else if you can use their email to get in touch with us rosemary at rosemaryaltea.com and we'll do our best to help you Al uh, <clears throat> Mary uh, says Ro Ooh, good morning, Mary. Rosemary. Good morning, Rosemary. You look beautiful. Oh, thank you. Actually, I'm wearing a sweater today. Yes, I'm in Florida and it's freezing. What temperature is it today? Oh, sixty. It's you know now in England. I remember the summers where if it reached sixty degrees, we were having a heat wave. It was wonderful. But when you're used to temperatures of 85 and it drops down to 60, it's cold. It's really cold. So we have the heating on a little bit and I'm wearing a sweater for the very first time in months and months and months, in a year probably. So cool. Yeah, 62. 62 degrees here. That's cold. So was there a question? Thank you, darling, for saying that. But yes, I, I, personally, <laughs> I personally know that I've been uh, – that. I have to work on being a better me. Uh, do I have any advice from the spiritual world about anything? Uh, I, of course, I'm immediately looking to Gregor, who says that you that you're actually you're doing really, really well. But to continue doing what you're doing, you, apparently he tells me that you don't have you, you're lacking sometimes in self worth and uh you you you've not been very brave in the past you've tended to let other people let's say control you a little bit or control your life a little bit but you seem to be coming into your own now uh be careful 
that you don't become obnoxious in this new strength. I'm saying that because I did. When I started to be myself, I realized how wonderful it is to be yourself. Uh, I became quite obnoxious for, for a few weeks until Grey Eagle sort of gave me a slap on the wrist and uh, showed me by my actions what an awful person I was being. Uh, but continue, darling. You're doing really well. Um, Carolyn. Let's see, we have got a comment. Got lots and lots of comments. Okay, let's have them then. So if Karen's on, she says good morning. Morning. Happy to see you all. Uh, Starshine, before she jotted off, oh. she said she had these words tattooed on herself to remind herself of this. So the tattoo says, the sky above me, the earth below me, and the fire within me. Good for you. I like That's that. Inspiration. Yeah, I've heard that before. Yeah. All right. And we have got Albertine. Is there a school in heaven? And does Grey Eagle give lessons? And are they the same lessons <laughs> as he gives us here on earth? Well, I suppose, I suppose, Albertine, you're, good morning, darling. I suppose you're asking, uh, does he give lessons in the spirit world? The answer is a resounding no. Uh, and we're laughing because he's also saying he's got enough with me. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm sorry I'm taking up all his, all his time and energy. Uh, when he says, I'm going to defend myself slightly, when he says he's got enough with me, I think he really is actually meaning that the work that we do is, uh, you know, it's a lot. And, uh, you know, so, and he he teaches through me. So that can be tough. Um, because I'm not always a great student myself, but you know, I I have to be aware all the time, and he helps me in that regard to be very, very aware of the responsibilities of what, of what we're doing. And uh, you know, anyone out there who thinks that we're being irresponsible should try should try from my end of things. We do try to be as responsible as we can because I'm very aware all of the time of how much what i say can influence people touches people's hearts and can change people's lives so we always have to make sure that we do that for the good of the person for the betterment and you know to 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 make life better for those people that we do connect with uh are there schools in the spirit world actually there are not necessarily structured in the way that we know them but yes there are places of learning in the there are many, many, many wise teachers who make themselves available to us. Uh, you know, when we I say to us, to to those in the spirit world, they make themselves available. So, you know, it's all about learning and growing. And so, of course, yes, there. You know, there are schools. I don't know if there's a school of rock. Uh, that's my grandson's thing. He's going to a concert this weekend the school of rock concert this weekend in new york city uh gray was laughing he says we have lots of music so maybe there is a school of rock there as well Al, let's have another question or a comment or whatever uh terry says good morning terry when i went through the first months after losing my son i felt so hopeless i know my son led me to you all it saved me and thank all of you Thank you for that, Terry. You wouldn't like to come on our Friday show, would you, and uh, and uh, talk about that a little bit? Because I think just those few words are so inspiring and so inspiring for other people. So I'd love to have you on my show if you'd like to be on. Maybe you could let Al know or make a comment. Just say yay or nay and we'll figure it out. You can come on. You don't have to be on camera if you don't want to be. Or you can be if you want to be. But I think that, you know, when people go through heartache and hardships and difficult times and they do come out of them, I think that other people just really want to hear that story because it's so inspirational to all of us, you know, and it, it, it shows us and it teaches us that with the right attitude, we can overcome. Sarah has a great soul science question. Uh oh, Sarah. Good morning, darling. How are you? She says, now I understand uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> why my partner and I were such a good match. I'm a fire slash retrospective. <gasps> Sarah. And, and 
he was an air slash traveler sign. Oh, he brought out the best in each a other. A perfect match. But after his sudden death, I feel like the negative parts of being this sign are becoming more and more obvious. Yeah. I don't like it, but within this grief, it's so hard to fight it. What yeah. can I do? Uh, the main thing, also, I'm so sorry. Well, I'm I'm thrilled that you had that wonderful relationship. I'm sorry that you don't have it so much anymore. You, you know, it's still with you though, don't you? But um, it's tough being a fire sign <laughs> under the best of circumstances. I'm saying this from the point of view of an earth sign. You understand? Uh, so you know, it's hard for me to get to wrap my head around. I the 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 least compatible people in my life are fire signs. Having said that, one of my closest and longest uh, lasting friends, and I've known her for over 40 years, I have to work it out, maybe even longer, um, is a fire sign. Uh, she's a bright star. She is a darling. She is wonderful. But boy, have I been close to strangling her a few times over the years. And we laugh about it because she knows who she is and I know who I am. So you're really, you're doing a, a great job in actually recognizing. Once you recognize that you're a, 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 a fire sign, and once you recognize that you are in fact that, dreaded <laughs> retrospective soul and I say that uh, in the nicest way because for the rest of us dealing with the retrospective soul can be very hard because that retrospective soul is always always inclined to look for the negative and inclined to look at the downside of things rather than the upside of things and it's very it's a very tough tough type of energy to deal with but you're halfway there to combating this because you you recognized it and recognizing it recognizing your reactions as being uh that soul sign recognizing what it is that you do is is half of the battle to to you know uh, growing and learning and working towards being a more positive person in the soul signs book there are some uh there is some advice for you and for all of you retrospectives out there like you're not lost you're not you know it's, it's just from my earth sign point of view it has to be really really tough if i can help in any way sarah let me know email me uh you will have a struggle but part of the struggle is, you know, that's your learning process. Uh, but um, I have a, a friend, Jeff, who came on our Everything is Attitude show. Sarah, maybe you'd like to come on our Everything is Attitude show and talk about this because it would be a really good subject. Jeff came on the show to talk about uh, the fact that he's, you know, he'd lost his son in a very traumatic way, a very tragic way but he is definitely a retrospective soul and living with an earth sign not as bad as me but she's an earth sign she's a central soul so you know but for him just to acknowledge it and he will tell you himself he has to strive every day to be positive and to and he recognizes that he looks on the negative and so he pushes himself to look at the positive so that's the best advice i can help you with now but if you'd love to come on our show we'd love to have you on our everything is attitude show and to talk about that and to talk about the that retrospective uh attitude uh, uh you know that that is can be so negative and also can be if you let it be can be so destructive so again make a comment let al know and we'd love to have you on the show again you don't have to appear uh, on camera we can do it with that with just with the sound if that's how you'd like to do it but i think it might benefit you actually and i could give you a recipe uh for life how about that next question carolyn tanya good morning tanya rosemary i feel so lost on whether i should sell my house and buy a new one or just stay where i am stay where you are that was so simple yes right that was so simple so easy stay where you are for now i know that you struggle another retrospective we have here 
I know that you struggle. I know that it, you find it difficult. But I think, you know, you made a decision. Work through it. Work through it. For at least for a little while longer. Al. We have Noi Noi as a question. Noi Noi, good morning. Where do people find these names from? That could really be that person's real name. I do realize that. But I do find these names so fascinating. We've got Starshine and we've got Gardens the, of the Gods. Yeah, Gardens of the Gods, Tulip. I think I think you yeah, Twiggy Leaf. I think Gardens of the Gods is a lovely little flower, beautiful tulip. That's what I think. Sorry, sorry. A question from Noi Noi. Let's go. Noi Noi would love to know what um, my deceased boyfriend is doing. I would love to know what my deceased boyfriend is doing. I'm asking Greg. I'm really getting nothing actually back. That doesn't mean he's not doing anything. I'm sure it's. Uh, I am hearing something. It's you're not going to be happy about it, perhaps. Uh, but you know, and I, I just bear in mind, I could sit here and make it up, and you'd be ever so happy with me. But I can't do that. But I can tell you that he's learning, learning, learning. All right, Twiggy Leaf asks. Good morning, Twiggy Leaf. Didn't we just mention Twiggy Leaf? Yeah, just little Twiggy. Come on, good morning, little Twiggy. Hello, Rosemary. Hi. <laughs> I have a question. Do people in the spirit world still create? For example, could Freddie Mercury still be writing songs, or does that kind of thing not happen anymore when we pass on? Oh, I think it happens much more so than it ever did when it was here because there are. There are less distractions. We can we learn to be exactly who we want to be. Uh, there's so much inspiration. It becomes more and more creative. Uh, it's like, you know, does music exist in the spirit world? I hope so, because I'm going to sing my way through it all, as I do sing my way through life as well. Did you like that, Al? <laughs> What do you think to that, me singing my way through life? What do you think? <laughs> I, think I think it's a great way for a lot of people to go through life. I do. I can't help myself. Uh, and it's so funny because when Samantha calls me, I don't know if, 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 uh, if any of you out there have not seen our Everything is Attitude last Friday. It is on Facebook and it is, I'm hoping it's on YouTube, with uh, Al's, Al and his daughter and uh myself and my daughter and my grandson you'll get to see how gorgeous our children are right al and um and uh when samantha calls me sometimes you know she'll call me if she's in the kitchen if she's making dinner or what have you we facetime all the time and she you know and in the background i can hear reese uh, singing away, he might be drawing, he might be playing with his trains, he might be whatever he's doing, but he's singing away to himself all by himself and keeping himself so happy. And I'm so happy that music is in his heart because, you know, I love to hear children singing, especially when they don't know that anyone's listening. Uh, do we have a question, Al? <laughs> a follow-up question to the that they create things in the spirit world, does that come back in any way, shape, or form to the physical world? What oh, yes, very much so. Because, you know, when people are being creative, and especially when they're being creative with something that they enjoy and they love, the energy that, that extends beyond them, around them and beyond them, goes out into the universe. And, of course, it you know, it touches us. It touches those of us who you know, who are aware or connecting with that universal energy. So, you know, the energy is only brighter and only stronger and certainly t does touch us and uh, makes us feel great. Yes. I mean, I know that Gregor loves to hear me sing. Um, he's laughing when I'm saying that because he doesn't have an option really because I sing anyway. Whoever's listening or 
if nobody's listening and I'll often open the doors in my house and I'm in the kitchen and I've got some I've got Phantom of the Opera on so I'm singing with my opera voice or I've got the Beatles on and I'm blasting out the Beatles or you know I've got Eartha Kitt or Ella Fitzgerald and I'm, they're my you know favorite that's my favorite music and I'm singing out uh, there, so he doesn't have a choice really but to listen, does he? As well, uh, Al, is it your turn for a question or is it Carolyn? I don't know. Al, um, Jen asks, she oh, says, Jen? Hi, Rosemary, with abortion, do aborted misca or miscarriages babies do they grow to yes, in the spirit world and do they, they know their mums? Yes, they do, they know their family, they, they have the same connection. Uh, but remember again, as I've said, you know, uh, God decides uh, the issue of, of life and death. The issue, the issue of uh, when we are born, when we die, is all really, in, in many ways, out of our hands. These are things that are preordained, and some souls. And you know, I was, I remember when I was young and naive, and uh, you know, and um, yeah, you know, when you're young, you tend to think you know a lot. Of course, when you get older, you realize you don't know any, you didn't know anything. Uh, and um, I can remember feeling very strongly. I was anti-abortion, and feeling very strongly that uh, you know this was um, you know something I couldn't understand it. And especially when I had several miscarriages prior to having Samantha, and then I had two more miscarriages or three more miscarriages after I'd had her uh, and um, so you know to for, for people to talk to me about abortion and you know so I felt you know I'm having such a hard time getting a child and here are people who are seem to me to be throwing them away or not valuing life and so on and so forth but as I got a little bit older I became more and more understanding of the fact that first of all there are women out there who for no reason of their own find themselves in a terrible situation they've been raped sometimes gang raped uh, the idea of having a child in this way can be absolutely abhorrent to them um, you know there are lots of reasons why people have abortions uh, and um, the bottom line is no matter how abhorrent or joyful or whatever it is we feel having a baby is going to be if God wants us to have that experience, we will have it. And if the soul within us decides it's only there for a very, very short term, that is what will happen. Those things are out of our hands. But yes, do babies in the womb, do they grow? Do they learn? Do they Are they still a part of our family? I can say without a doubt, yes. No matter whether they were uh, mis miscarriages abortions however they left our womb doesn't matter they are souls they are uh, souls of our earth uh, earth connected earth bound in many ways and they will grow with us yes Karen Teresa has a nice comment good morning yes we've spoken to Teresa mm -hmm. before but yes go ahead thank you Rosemary a few weeks ago I was watching you by myself and now I have three friends who have joined me the show is great <laughs> good and well don't forget to subscribe 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 everybody out there please we've also got Aparita from Peru uh, India good morning Aparita there good morning Gosh, it's late. Dean is laughing at our being chilly at 60 degrees. He says that's what he keeps his house set at in Wisconsin <laughs> in the winter. And he's probably walking about in it wearing a t-shirt yeah. and shorts or something, yeah. And then on a, a sadder note, Lori's saying she's off to pick her sister up at the bus. She's feeling pretty broken. She's coming for a break. She got away from an abusive husband, and now the kids are treating her badly. So if we could send her healing for that. And that's Lisa, Laurie's Laurie. sister. Yeah, and uh, her, she, her she's, sister just got out of an abusive relationship. And now, Laurie, well done you. Well done you for being supportive of your sister. Uh, we're going to be sending lots of healing 
uh, she'll need a lot of tenderness, a lot of gentleness, a lot of understanding, and the kids need a good kick up the backside. Time she did it, don't you think? When you're in an abusive relationship, you are so pushed down and pushed down and pushed down that it's very hard to dish out any kind of discipline. Whether her kids are 2, 22 or 52, no one should ever, ever take abuse from their children, ever. So in the way that she's standing up to her husband, she needs to stand up to her children and, she, and they need to learn there are consequences to bad behavior. Help her to do that, I know you will. Uh, Al. Uh, we're close to time, I just uh, wanted to let you know that. Marlene says, hello, Rosemary from New England. Right before starting uh, chemotherapy for breast cancer, uh, she wants to know how Kachuro is doing too. Good morning, Marlene. Uh, I'd like to know if, uh, if I know her, because I'm not sure if I do, but for, so talking about the um, chemo, we're right with you. I'd like to put you on our healing list, if I may. Uh, and we'll be sending you healing every single day. Please let us know. You can either let us know through this show or you can let us know uh, via the email, rosemary at rosemarealtea.com. Just let us know how you're doing, would you, darling? Because it's tough. But, you know, cancer is not the dreaded C that it used to be. There are so many cures. I know there are lots of people still dying of cancer, or, you know, but there are also so many more people who are surviving, and we know so much more medically. There are so many more doctors who are familiar with this, and they know much more now what they're doing. So please keep us posted. But we're going to send you some healing anyway. Um, how is Kachoro doing? He's he's actually struggling a little bit. Um, I mean, he's twelve years old i'm going to get a bit upset here he's 12 years old he is struggling he's i mean if you've heard him over the last few months those of you who watch the show regularly the huffing and the puffing and the panting and so on obviously his lungs are a little bit uh he's struggling a little bit uh he's better in this cold weather i have to tell you than when it's you know it's really really hot and steamy uh last week for, for two weeks, he's been off his food and not eating. He didn't really want all of this information, did you? But he's not been eating at all. And, you know, when you look at an animal and you just, you, you know that something is going on with them and that's what I feel with him. But there's nothing that a vet can do to help. It's just, it's called old age, I think. So my job now is to make him as comfortable as I possibly can. He's back to eating. I bought some very, very good stuff. I think it's called Instinct, if anybody's out there having trouble with their animal. You crumble it on top of the food, and uh, and he seems to enjoy that, and it's perked his appetite back up. Uh, he is struggling also because he now can't jump onto the bed. He fell off the bed the other day and couldn't get back up yes for all of you out there yes i do let him sleep on my bed with me i put blankets down for him he sleeps on my bed shame on me shame on me uh, but the bed is so high and he can't jump up so now i have to help him up so but thank you for asking i'm done with with Kachoro now <laughs> whole big saga about my puppy but if anyone out there would like to send him healing i'd love to have you do that. Carolyn, do we have another question? Getting off of animals here. <laughs> Comments, questions, anything. We've got a question from Keisha who was wondering if um, <clears throat> there was a certain rule to getting questions answered. So here's her question. I've been told that Whitney Houston was my mom in a past life. I've been having dreams about her for eight months. I'm always a child or teenager. If I died young, would that be the reason for her problem? I don't know who told you that Whitney Houston, is it Whitney Houston was her mum or she yes. was, right. I don't know who told you that, but they're talking out the top of the head. That's all I want to say to that, because I don't believe it for a nanosecond. I don't believe in a past life she was your mother. I think that whoever you've been talking to has got a really, really vivid imagination and you know i wish people would think before they tell 
you these things because uh, it just creates all sorts of issues. If you've been dreaming of Whitney Houston, I think it's because you've been led to believe, and uh, you and you know you, you're you're sort of wondering and and so on in in your head about this. Uh, you can believe me or not believe me when I tell you that Whitney Houston is not your mother in any shape or form, past life or any other life. Uh, that doesn't mean that you're not treasured, you are, and very much so, um, and that there are many people in the spirit world who do treasure you and who do love you and who do care about you. And my advice to you would be that you focus on those that you know and that you love and you stop worrying about what happened in a past life because the life as you're living it now is the most important thing and i would say that to everybody out there who is so involved in their past lives that they forget that they should be living this life this is the life that we have and this is the life that is important to us so you know just uh hold on to that fact and hold on to the fact that you are well loved even if maybe not by whitney houston uh, Wonderful. All right, we've got Julia. Good morning, Julia. My sister-in-law has a husband that has tried to kill her. After jail time, he's being released soon and will come back and try to kill her and her four children, as he said he would. She's feeling very worried and yeah, basically looking for your advice or your thoughts. Uh, we're going to uh, we're going to send you. A uh, some healing here he comes my boy we're going to send you some healing and also we're going to say we're going to see if Greg can help to to put a a ring of protection around you nevertheless you need to be sensible you need to protect yourself uh you need to you know if it's possible for you to move away move away uh, if it's possible for you to have protection and to make sure there are always people around you or there's a number you can call, I'm sure the police are aware of, it, of what's going on. If they are not, you have to let them know. Go, even before your husband comes out of jail, go to um, a shelter. Uh, go to women's shelters. Tell them what your story is. Get them to help you. Get them to help safeguard you. Don't take this lightly. Uh, you know, just you need to be proactive now. You can protect yourself. I think you'll be okay. But nevertheless, you know, you don't want your kids harassed. You don't want yourself harassed. You don't want to have to go through some other man's crazy stuff. So get yourself some help now. Go to the police and explain to them that you're, you're worried. Go to a... a family shelter, a, a home, a, not a home, a, a, a battered wife shelter, go and seek help. Uh, I'm sure there is something in your area. Prepare now. Be proactive, darling. And if there's anything I can do, email me, rosemary at rosemaryartel.com. I believe Marlene is the lady that received healing from Kachiro. I think so. I wondered about that. I wondered, Marlene, are you the lovely she said, lady yes. I t t talk about in my story? Yes. Oh, she darling. says, good morning, Rosemary. Thank you so much for sharing your gift. Weren't, weren't you supposed to die several years ago? And, you, and look at you. She says, Kacharo helped me beyond measure. I have shared him with everyone how special he is. Please give him hugs from me, healing on the way. Do you know, Marlene, I've thought about you so many times, so many, many times. I'd love to have you on our Everything is Attitude show if you'd come on. Uh, I would love to have you on our show because your story is so incredible. It really is incredible. And I do think of you often. And uh, look, all these years later, how many years is it since we were in New, ha New Hampshire, I think it was? Uh, how many years later? And yes, you're going through chemo, but I think you're going to do really, really well. And um, we'll ask Kachoro to send you some healing because he's your special healer. Uh, he is a healer dog. Uh, so Marlene, if you have any interest in coming on our Friday night show, 6 o'clock Standard Eastern Time, which is the same time, I think, as I am. 
uh, and uh, it is New Hampshire, right? Uh, yes, and um, yes, yes, yes. we'd love to have you on the show. So if you could, uh, how do we do this, Al? She could email. Um, and she's saying she definitely wants to do it. Well, even to just set it up, what's the email for you? Oh, just uh, info at everythingisattitude.com. Info at everythingisattitude.com. Uh, and you can email me as well, Marlene, um, rosemary at rosemaryoutair.com. We'd love to have you on, whether you come on camera or not is your choice, but we'd love to have you on because your story is an amazing, amazing, amazing story. And you're an amazing, amazing, amazing woman. Uh, and so I think uh, on that note. Well, hold on one second. We've oh, got a follow up from oh, Keisha. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Keisha says three <laughs> mediums told her this. Well, and she said, hold on. She's been trying to find out why she had those dreams. So she started going to the psychics. But she says, thank you for telling me the truth. Oh, darling, you're very welcome. And you're, you are using the term medium extremely loosely now. I have to say to you, I'm sorry, but you know, I'm so glad that, you, <laughs> that you're happy. I told, I told you as it really is and not as people think that you want it to be. I hope now that you can move forward with your life and get on with your life in a very positive way work on the people who love you who you know are in the spirit world who surround you and are with you work on them and let go of all of this other nonsense and i would also add to you and to anybody else out there who's listening when you seek out someone a psychic a medium or whatever they call themselves right we know there are a lot of charlatans out there. We know there are people, worse still, who really believe that they have a gift, but they're fooling themselves as well as everybody else. Um, be cautious, be careful. There are also some really good people out there. Don't forget them. People who really do have a gift and who will help you. So really be cautious. Al, do you want to say anything about that quickly before we, before we close the show? No, just um, have have a, an open mind and use the three time rule, right? Make sure yes. that you're uh, you're not making things up and that things are actually as you, as as they are. And when you when you're going to somebody, um, if they're telling you everything is beautiful, uh, you know, all the time, it's probably not true. And uh, it's, no, it's not. <laughs> I know I went, when I went to you, you know, you you told it like it is, just like uh -oh. Lakeisha. <laughs> Uh, but but that that uh, I understood that you were genuine and and you were telling me the truth uh, because you you told it like it was. Well, you know, I'm I'm known as I'm I'm known for my somewhat harsh. I'm trying not to be harsh, but somewhat down to earth. I am going to tell you as it is. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, but I am going to be gentle in the things that I do say to people. But uh, I'm also not going to tell you what it is that you want to hear. I'm going to tell you as it really is, which I can guarantee you, once you've got over what it is you think you want to hear, I'll guarantee you that by the time I'm done with you, it's a, a fabulous experience, right, Carolyn? It's a yes, wonderful it experience. Is. And it will be exactly what you want to hear, which will be the truth of the matter, and uh, which is a joyful thing. We, if you could just repeat your email, and if you didn't get your answer, your question answered, then they need to email us because perhaps it was too long and confusing. Oh yeah, if you're going to ask a question, um, make it a sort of a nice, concise, short. Because if you write and write and write and write, we, I mean, we, you know, we've got two people here. That we, you can't, you can, we can't read the whole thing. So there's a tendency to. Go for the shorter questions. So, so make your question concise. We try to take questions in order as they come. But again, if the question is overly long, and you know, I mean, by the time you're done, we, we're out of time. We don't have time to answer the question. Never mind, read the question. But we do try to take them as they come. If you would like to email me, Rosemary, R O S E M A R Y. I can't believe I have to spell my own name, Rosemary at Rosemary Altea, A-L-T-E-A, rosemarealtea.com. If you want to 
be on the Everything is Attitude show, which is Friday night, 6 o'clock Standard Eastern Time. You can email me again at that uh, email address and ask how do you do it. Or you can uh, actually um, email us at info at everythingisattitude.com. And, uh, you know, and I'll check those emails on a regular basis and uh you know just say you want to be on if you would rather not be on camera just say i'd love to be on the show but not on camera i've invited three people today to be on the show and if jan is there listening i'd love you to come on as well because i think you have an inspiring and inspirational wonderful story to tell too so there are lots of people out there who maybe are camera shy you don't have to be on camera we'll talk to you just microphone only uh but please you know just join us because your stories inspire others right i'm going to say one more thing subscribe 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 that was that was three more things and since you said subscribe i have to say as keisha said i subscribe so i can get my real answers from you i'll let the others entertain you mm, wonderful thanks keisha <laughs> all right subscribe 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 and uh, Al and I will be together tomorrow night, uh, Friday night, Standard Eastern Time, 6 o'clock. Uh, and um, we'll be uh, talking about everything is attitude. And uh, we're not quite sure what the subject is. We might surprise you. Just, hey, you never know what the subject is. All right. So, um, and until I see you again uh, for our live chat show uh, every Thursday morning, please, please, please. Have a very, very, and yes, again, another very, very blessed, blessed day. I have to now find that little arrow, and there it is. There you go. Bye. Al's texting you. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm not clicking here.